we will proceed from Iran to Mexico. <laughs> and uh, next week uh, it is Hattie Marcos uh, uh, talking about academic knowledge, hip hop, and violence in Mexico. That took the organized soundscape of the Balkans. I'm talking from a perspective of an insider ethnomusicologist from the Balkans, from Serbia, and I argue that Balkan music is a term of the global popular music industry, not of ethnomusicology and even not strictly of local popular music markets, and I'm trying to examine a new research topic. Uh, the structure of this presentation is the following. I will give a very short overview of the extensive literature about the notion of the Balkans with ethnomusicological literature relevant to this topic. I also underline the question of the definition of the Balkan popular music label and isolate its main structural characteristics. Finally, I offer a new possibility of reconsidering a specific music genre of the region based on the research of urban folk music practices. My aim is not to neglect Balkan music stereotypes hit to related to today's popular music industry, but to call for a joint ethnomusicological research of the common Pan-Balkan heritage, the one that uh, was marginalized in scientific discourse due to its orientation towards national heritages built from rural uh, musical folklore since the 19th century. This means thinking about uh, thinking beyond current national borders, but also moving borders of topics and tools in ba Balkan ethnomusicologies. Uh, starting from uh, Maria Todorova's landmark study, Imagining the Balkans, numerous authors have raised the voice against the stereotypical images of Southern, Southeastern Europe, Balkans. Uh, as it is known, her work was grounded in Edward Said's Orientalism, the book which uh, revealed the metaphor of, for Eastern others, suppressed by the hegemony of the West. From Todorova's uh, work, the Balkans is interpreted as, as European inner other, it has incomplete East and at the same time the incomplete West. It is very important that she emphasized the role of the Ottoman uh, legacy of the region. and. Uh, uh, we can add the perspectives of uh, general Mediterranean and Slavic connections, but also Byzantine and austro hungarian empires to the history, and what is today highly relevant, Yugoslav heritage and diaspora contexts. And all of the uh, aforementioned can be a separate topic. Um, as Milica Bakic Hayden wrote in 1995, Balkan in Europe is in the process of a so-called nesting orientalism, which means that Balkan as a metaphor is not geographically fixed, but it is always more Eastern than a particular country, in Hayden's case, Yugoslavia. Uh, Todorov observed the Balkans as uh, the margin of Europe, and Catherine Fleming emphasized its liminality. Nevertheless, the Balkans, in today's political discourse of Southeastern Europe, is viewed as the crossroads between the East and West in Europe, with the, uh, the connotations both of the meeting and the clash of cultures. Almost 20 years after the publication of Todorova's book, the term the Balkans seems to have lost some of its negative qualifications related to word, uh, wars in favor of characteristics with the positive overtones, such as uh, the Balkans people uh, in uh, entertainment, and they're uh, uh, actually, uh, sorry, wrong line, which is strongly associated with the music. Uh, various researchers from the re realms of literature, film, dance, and music contributed to the problematization of the Balkans. After the acknowledgement that the Balkans is an imaginary symbolic place, there are two important steps. The first one is the deconstruction of negative representations of the Balkans, which originate mostly from the 19th century foreign travelogues and the 20th century histories. These regard the Balkans as a violent and un uncivilized place, previously under Ottoman and later uh, under communist, which means Easter enemy rule, and also as a territory of small nationalistic states which fell apart by war. Uh, the second one is the repercussional construction and perpetuation of pseudo-positive stereotypes about the Balkans that is uh, actually an ethnographic museum in the periphery of Europe with the colorful folklore, ecstatic experience and uh, finally wild entertainment aside from food and drink it is basically a touristic approach, extremely important part is folk music. Uh, I call these stereotypes pseudo-positive because their final goal is usually commodification of folklore, although they are positive, 
and have uh, a huge impact on international visibility and consequently the development of humanistic disciplines and folklore in the region. These two uh, types of stereotypes originate from the extra Balkan discourses, Western discourses. The third step is uh, in the um, consideration of the imaginary Balkans uh, music is auto Balkanism, which means an internalization of stereotypes. So nowadays we have the topic of the Balkans in the meaning of the feeling uh, of inferiority towards West, but also as a part of cultural policy in representative strategies, especially of popular music industry and entertainment in tourism. All three types of approaches bring their own soundscapes of imaginary Balkans. In the spirit of post-colonial studies, Todorova asked the question whether it is possible that the subalterns speak for themselves and whether the, uh, the impossibility of the self-representation makes them oppressed. So this presentation is motivated by that thought, speaking about the Balkans, from the Balkans, but also engaging for the Balkans. The area of ethnomusicology, drawing from the fieldwork throughout the Balkan Peninsula, has been a fruitful topic for numerous local and foreign ethnomusicologists, and there are several referential publications on this topic. The very term, the Balkans, has raised a special interest in the ethnomusicological research of outsiders, uh, so-called outsiders, especially from English and German-speaking uh, disciplinary traditions. Ethnomusicological research has been dealing with rich folk music heritage, so every national ethnomusicological school is doing collection of the field transcription and analysis, classification and comparison of organological interpretations. So in ethnomusicology, there cannot exist only one imaginary musicscape of the Balkans. It may be any ethnic local rule, usually ritual practice, vocally and or instrumentally, uh, performed uh, uh, so we can hear, recall any uh, very of uh, various folk instruments. Uh, so it can be performed a uh, single part or more exotically, how to say, multi part, often within a narrow melodic range and with the specific, often exocritons, uh, with possible uh, dance accompaniment. Uh, ethnomusicology in the region has been developing rapidly from the period after World War II and was influenced not only by Eastern paradigm uh, present in communist countries but also by Western. Despite different languages, ethnomusicologists in the region now collaborate uh, with the umbrella of uh, international ethnomusicological organizations. Balkan was interesting for international music and dance market in the first half of the 20th century. Uh, there was this geographical uh, uh, label of Balkan and also polo dance scene in the United States of America. Stronger interest uh, in the Balkans has coincided with the breakthrough of the popular music label, which refers to it in its name and uh, which has acquired and well uh, rounded discourse and the set of folk music representations of the Balkans, which are, uh, how to say, valid today. Uh, by uh, supporting the Balkan stereotypes described by Todorova, this music has found its place at the world music market predominantly outside of the Balkans, but with an impact on the music uh, recorded in the Balkans, and it largely com commodifies the imaginary Balkan soundscape. In her dissertation about Balkan music stereotypes, Alexandra Markovic pointed several steps in the stylistic diachrony of a Balkan music label. So, uh, Le Mystère de Voix Bouguer in the 1970s uh, introduced village heterophonic sing, uh, singing, then popularity of Rom uh, Romani musicians from Esma Rejepova onwards, uh, the wave of post-2000 Romanian brass bands and Bucha trumpet festival in Serbia as some genuine madness, and finally danceable Balkan beat, a combination of electronics and live music which is pressing a metric component, par uh, partly parodic and suitable for internalization, different than rather artistic Balkan jazz. And from my uh, research of Balkan sound images in Serbia, the essential characteristics, so it is impossible to avoid stereotypes, are the trumpet accompaniment, emphasized fast double or axa rhythm, appearances of hijaz tetrachord, the timbre of uh, back vocals typical for the singing manner of the Central Balkans, singing in Slavic and, uh, or Romani language. Aside from that, the diaspora communities uh, from the Balkan countries, especially from former Yugoslavia, increased the visibility of the Balkans in European new surroundings and created a nostalgic soundscape of their homelands. 
nowadays their Balkan music refers mostly uh, to the one that I will uh, talk about, the, the music in the Balkans, which indicates that the label Balkan, so uh, you can imagine here um, uh, various protagonists from uh, Goran Bregovic to DJ Chantel, is not made for them, uh, also contemporary Balkan music gives some structural elements of uh, that newly composed folk music, but predominantly for foreign fans of particular performance uh, and hybrid authenticity. I want to call for ethnomusicological research of the urban folk music scene in the Balkans and its possibilities encouraged by the existence of uh, proceedings which are uh, both actually here, urban music in the Balkans about various folk music uh, phenomena in urban settings from different researchers, localities and times, and then with similar aspirations of uh, colleagues, uh, colleagues in Bulgaria, which are related also to Balkan fusion in the domain of uh, world music. I think on the work of uh, Venceslav Dimo and Rosmarie Statelo and Lozak Kapitchevo, and uh, with inspiring work which emphasized cultural, social and political aspects of regional, national, popular folk music, or of ethnomusicologists interested in the Balkans. I will present the historical background related to my idea, the approach based on my doctoral dissertation, and my suggestions for further research possibilities. The, the good example of pan-Balkan music heritage is the popularity of the song Ushkudara, but the main uh, question should not be where is Balkan and who exclusively owns that or any similar song, but uh, uh, I, I propose synthetical and comparative dealing with omnipresent phenomena, which is actually not uh, researched in terms of historical traces, geographical dispersion, musical structure, local connections and adaptations, although its social meaning is valuably researched. Uh, so, uh, what is my approach to urban folk music? By that syntagm, I mean the other uh, folk music from uh, standard Balkan ethnomusicological point of view, not rural musical folklore, but regional popular folk music, uh, which uh, can be traced from the 19th century, which is an amalgam of local rural folklore practices, Eastern and Western influences, and which is uh, conditioned with production, reproduction, dissemination and consumption via mass media and live performances. Its synonyms uh, all over former Yugoslav countries may be uh, Varoška or Sevdalinka, depending on the context. So on the slide is a uh, definition of popular music by Bruno Neto, which I will not read because of time. Uh, and my, uh, uh, my work was devoted to urban folk music before World War II in Serbia. Uh, that is uh, early popular music and the consequential genre after the war and today. Starogradska uh, musica, old urban music, and now I'm broadening research to the after, war, uh, after World War II uh, genre, Novokomponovana Narodna Muzika, newly composed folk music. So uh, that is uh, what I'm uh, thinking uh, to uh, also to discuss here uh, because of the topic and other ethnomusicological research. Uh, the material, so uh, in brackets are my examples, but the material that I researched uh, related to the aspects of Starogradska musica genre included popular sheet music and sound editions, uh, gramophone records, I mean, uh, radio broadcasting programs before World War II, personal field recordings of performances, as well as uh, material for contextualization such as uh, various printed electronic media narratives, official archival documentation from Belgrade, published memoirs and personal in-depth interviews with prominent musicians. Uh, so, uh, with the analysis of discography scores and, uh, and, and appendices for musicians' licenses, I define the repertoire. So, uh, actually, I find as important uh, repertoire, isolating particular songs which can be traced. Then, uh, in that uh, corpus, I find very important adaptations of uh, various songs. Also, um, I, uh, I'm, I was doing research about who were key persons and institutions who created the policies and the body of urban folk music before World War, World War II, such as music editors, band uh, with leaders, composers, poets, popular singers. Um, 
uh, question of uh, mutual uh, influences between ethnicities uh, I found also very important. So it can be traced, uh, for example, how it is uh, labeled uh, something to be folk music, of which ethnicity is it Serb, uh, Serbo-Croatian, uh, then is it Gypsy, uh, some uh, different, um, different influence, or, or uh, for example, which influences are isolated uh, to be Eastern, Western, Southern, Northern. Uh, uh, so, to summarize my uh, musical analysis briefly, so uh, it is known that lyrics are usually about love, sometimes patriotic, uh, uh, so that a possible new music scape can be like this. The tunes were cantabile and the wave-like with a large range, uh, double or triple bar measures, simple rhythm, sometimes parlando bat or aksak. Harmonies were simple as well, non-dense chord progression, diatonic modulations in the closest tonalities, sometimes with mutations. Accompaniment was also simple, but its texture depends on the, on the ability of the pianist or orchestra. So, uh, also the genres after World War II, uh, reaction to previous uh, urban folk music, Novokomponovana Musica, uh, it has similar characteristics, but the main difference uh, is uh, the result of uh, aspiration towards following the progressive tendencies in global popular music. Um, uh, popular music. Metro rhythm from particular popular dances, vocal timbre and ornamentation technique, orchestrations which demands electronic and loud, loud sound systems, and the performances in particular context lead to that, that these um, Simple characteristics acquire complexity in terms of orchestration, variation, and improvisation, but also the effective potential on the audience who experiences it and participates. So that context, which I uh, think is important, is the context of tavern. My research is also dealing with dynamism of performances, uh, where we can trace principles of macroform building, in particular tonalities and metrorhythmical patterns, poetic themes, but also the interaction with audience, which is based through remuneration. Uh, so why I see the potential of uh, urban folk music? Uh, there is tradition uh, of regional popular music, which is different from Western global popular music, uh, which synthesizes various uh, local music practices, emphasizes overcoming of national borders, which is widely accepted, practiced and uh, transmitted in the region. It can be concluded that uh, Pan-Balkan urban folk music tradition is a form of love lyrical song uh, harmonized and orchestrated in modern, which means West, Western, which means actually Central European way, but it is based on national language, particular scales, metro rhythms, melodies, melismas, which are often uh, associated with Eastern, which means Ottoman heritage. Also, more attention should be paid to the potential of contextually similar, similar regional phenomena. I found similarities all over uh, the Balkans, uh, in, uh, in particular genres. According to my comparative research of the literature about regional urban folk music practices, urban folk music in the first half of the 20th century in Belgrade took not only the context of performance and distribution, but also instrumentarium, ensemble models, and musical piece, uh, pieces. So, here is the quotation of uh, Donna Buchanan, which I found very important. Um, uh, it is applicable uh, generally to urban folk music. So, quotation is, uh, first, while most of the renditions have resulted from intercultural contact, their significance lies elsewhere in their stylistic context, and content, uh, which documents the, and the changing social, political, and economic circumstances of one or another Balkan people or over the past century. Second, in contrast to this strongly assertive diversity, the popularization of a single song is in so many venues uh, also reveals circuits of Balkan inter interchange well established prior to those of contemporary global media. Conversely, similar circuits are also informing the mass-mediated stylistic inter interculturality permitting today's Balkan ethnopop genres, whose significance is linked in part to the repositioning and redefining of the Balkans as regions and states within the new Europe. So, uh, what happened after World War II uh, uh, with urban uh, sounds of folk music soundscape in the Balkans? Uh, it emerged uh, genre of Novokomponova uh, Narodna Muzika, newly composed uh, folk music also emerged uh, in, uh, in Yugoslavia, but also 
um, their, uh, the relation of rural and urban folk music, um, uh, which was uh, you know, all uh, con uh, conceived as something negative you know, among contemporaries, uh, was uh, also influenced uh, by, uh, actually it was giving influence to um, uh, other Balkan ethnopop genres. So uh, very important uh, uh, from uh, were influences from uh, uh, 80s onwards to uh, Greece, Bulgaria, Turkey, and Romania, and also it was uh, receiving of influences. So um, there also uh, because of time there are also uh, uh, several works of uh, another European ethnomusicologist related to uh, that national urban folk music phenomenon. So uh, I will uh, just uh, make some uh, parallels uh, from very recent study of uh, uh, Anka Djurjescu and Esperanza Rebulescu uh, published in the book about Manele. Uh, so uh, I will quote that because I found, found it very similar to, uh, to another urban, urban folk music genres. Seen from the objective distance that an ethnomusicologist attempts to maintain, Manele, and we can say every ethnopop genre, are the cumulative products of Romania's Balkan Oriental past, we may add urban past, uh, the nationalist cultural policies of the communist regime, uh, Western cultural pressure, accelerated globalization, and the world capitalism marrying the country in the last few decades, including the unclear social relations it has generated. Manele are not simply music, but rather a complex syncretic phenomenon, born from the fusion of a relatively new vocal and instrumental music on the one hand, and specific lyrical verses, dance, gestures, speeches, quoting, visual symbols, and patterns of behavior during its production on, uh, in, on the other, and quotation. To conclude, we then actually open call for the comments, uh, comments in this seminar. May the Balkans be presented uh, in a different way, opposite to research rural music practices and contemporary music industry, and can urban folk music be an additional soundscape of the imaginary Balkans? With the research of uh, new sources about this omnipresent music, I say that it can be. Uh, what should be done is to prepare collaborative historiographies, ethno ethnographies, and music analysis in order to compare the findings. I argue that a special attention for this type of research should be devoted to the aspects of popular discographies and to an understanding of the dynamism of performances, especially in the taverns. From this material, we can uh, observe what actually produce, uh, produces folk music soundscapes of the Balkans today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Great. Has anyone got any questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's an uh, important um, it's a logical perspective that needs to be done in this regard. Um, uh, uh, I'm wondering if you have some interesting examples of how this might work in your research. For example, we know this case of Ushkudara, you mentioned it, which was also a um, um, uh, the topic of the movie, um, uh, uh, whose song is this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which was an interesting case of, in, of this kind of approach. Do you have like anything else? Uh, the, mm, I, I tried to point it not only the the repertoires, which was uh, which are actually the most uh, obvious uh, cases, but also I found similarities. Sorry, I found similar, similarities in the tavern context. Uh, which is uh, actually a uh, uh, very fun Balkan phenomenon and uh, actually through the history and even nowadays uh, there, uh, um, there, there is a network of musician scene who performs um, in other Balkan countries, uh, um, how to say in English maybe, mingle <laughs> in some, uh, uh, in some uh, way which uh, I uh, found as very specific for the Balkan popular folk music. So um, there are, uh, for example, not only uh, uh, examples such as Ushkadara, but also today there is uh, in the uh, uh, turbo folk genre, um, there are composers uh, who are selling their compositions and uh, uh, compositions are adapted to national languages even today. So 
there are many uh, Greek songs, for example, popular songs of Greek composers and originally uh, Greek performers, who are, uh, which are performed in Serbia, in Bulgaria, in Turkey, in Romania, and vice versa. So, we've got a question over here. Yeah, we've got a question over here. Did you also have a question here? Oh, oh okay, so then we'll take this question and then, and then your question. Thank you very much. <clears throat> very interesting. A lot of information. I'm, I'm not sure if I got everything right, but I have uh, one aspect of this. It's, of course, that this is something that we see all over the world right now, that the disconnection of musical styles from historical geographical uh, connections. And, and this always causes tensions, of course. Now, this music has become a style that you could use. You could be from another part of the world and, and play Balkan music. And there are tensions all the time. And you had uh, a question uh, may the Balkans be represented, represented, represented in a different way? And obviously, yes. <laughs> but the interesting part, uh, thing behind that question is who wants that? Who, uh, from, uh, who is, who is uh, uh, calling for a, a, another representation? Yeah. Um, uh, as uh, it was uh, the case in uh, uh, previous, uh, how to say, uh, soundscapes, which means uh, uh, national, uh, different na national practices which were actually uh, constructed Balkan musical heritage uh, in ethnomusicology, and uh, the second one which was constructed uh, in music industry. Um, um, honestly, <laughs> uh, I would... I, um, uh, I know that uh, the, uh, that from whom uh, that that, uh, that initiative is uh, uh, maybe actually from ethnomusicologists. So uh, I have uh, on the field uh, uh, feedback of musicians that uh, they uh, themselves also see that uh, there is some pan Balkan musical heritage. But uh, they all sing uh, in uh, different languages, but, and they like the, when they know that there is some each, uh, some common context, some common tune in just tune, but not uh, verses. So um, uh, it can be said that that initiative, in this case, um, in this very presentation, is from me, and I know that there are some other colleagues who also had that. Uh, motive to research urban folk music, but actually there is no some stronger initiative about that. I am trying to maybe uh, develop <laughs> that. Yes, because I am thinking that all of these are constructions. Of course, um, and um, those previous constructions were also, how to say, from above, from some specialists. Uh, so um, popular popular music was um, how to say stereotypes were to uh, choose to make some new uh, label than in previous ethnomusicological uh, state uh, schools it was uh, idea just to uh, homogenize in a way the region which was actually very developed on different schools so I don't know if I answered your question well, somehow yes. Great, thank you. We're running out of time. Joseph, would you mind discussing your question okay. a bit later with that? Or do you want to... Well, I had one question which was very, very quick. Very quick. Very quick. You know, apart from the urban uh, tradition in, in Balkans, there is also the rural tradition, which made it uh, very big in the 70s and 80s, but the 80s. And uh, are there any attempts to, to combine these two traditions? In, Welcome, Pablo, because I have not heard anything <coughs> combining both, you know, the instrumental and uh, augmented seconds of it, and the, the uh, vocal singing in uh, second dissonances, etc. I'm not sure if I understand it you correctly. Uh, mm, uh, attempts to combine urban folk music with rural. Yes. Uh, 
Uh, this urban folk music is actually, um, how to say, uh, in the field, it's, I, I call it urban, but it is uh, performed also in uh, rural contexts. But um, we may now discuss that um, division of rural urban nowadays, which is very... Um, it, it is not as it... Uh, how to say... Uh, it is not so strong division nowadays. Uh, I use this urban folk, uh, ur the term urban, operatively because uh, there is strong tradition of rural uh, research of rural in ethnomusicology and rural is uh, um, of supposed archaic origin, um, pre-industrialized uh, pre traditions and stuff like that and today it does not exist so uh, my term was actually uh, uh, response uh, in a way also to that type of ethnological research. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Maria.